One of the things I love about astronomy is how it's rapidly changing and evolving over time. Every day, there are new discoveries and advancements in theories that take us incrementally forward in our understanding of the universe. One of the best examples of this is dark matter, mysterious and invisible, but a significant part of the universe and accounting for the vast majority of the mass out there. It was first theorized almost a hundred years ago when astronomers surveyed the total mass of distant galaxy clusters and found that the visible mass we can see must just be a fraction of the total material in those clusters. When you add up all the stars and gas, galaxies move and rotate in ways that indicate there's a huge halo of invisible matter surrounding it. Some of the best evidence came from Vera Rubin and Kent Ford in the 60s and 70s when they measured the rotational velocity of edge-on spiral galaxies. They estimated that there must be about six times as much dark matter as regular matter. Dark matter became a serious mystery in astronomy and many observers and theorists have spent the last half century trying to work out what it is. And dark matter hasn't given up its secrets easily. Originally, astronomers thought it might not actually be invisible mass, but a misunderstanding of how gravity works at the largest scales. But over the last few decades, techniques have been developed using the gravity of dark matter itself to measure how it bends light for more distant objects. Astronomers don't know what dark matter is, but they're able to use it as a telescope. Now, that's impressive. They found amazing features in the dark matter web out there, vast walls and filaments defining the largest scale structures in the universe, clusters where dark matter and its gas have been separated from each other. Remember, we're at the cutting edge of this mystery, and you're watching it unfold in real time. 25 years from now, 100 years from now, I'm sure we'll look back at our quaint attempts to understand dark matter. One of the most interesting questions I have right now is, could there be dark matter galaxies, completely invisible to our eyes, but able to interact through gravity? Of course, times like this, I like to bring in a ringer, someone who's dedicated their life to the study of these questions. And today, I've got Sarah Pearson, a graduate student of astronomy at Columbia University and the host of Space with Sarah. Sarah studies the formation and interactions of dwarf galaxies surrounding the Milky Way to understand how galaxies built up at the earliest times in the universe and form the largest galaxies we see in the present day. Sarah, welcome to the Guide to Space. Hi, Fraser. Thanks. So can you talk a little bit about how astronomers map out the distribution of dark matter in the universe? Yes, definitely. So that is a hard question because as you just explained, we actually don't see the dark matter. But one assumption about the universe we live in is that the light matter or baryonic matter, uh, for example, that you, me, and stars and planets consist of, and also galaxies, that they kind of trace out where the dark matter is also located. So one assumption is that the kind of light matter follows the dark matter. So in that way, we can actually map out to huge distances kind of how galaxies and clusters of galaxies are located in our universe. And we imagine that the dark matter structure is somewhat similar. And also recently, uh, very large scale structure simulations of our own universe have addressed this by kind of starting out with an almost uniform distribution of dark matter in the very early universe. And what they see is that when they let the universe evolve in time, for example, the universe is expanding, you kind of have these uh, dark matter clumps forming into galaxies and all these uh, filaments that you discussed. So you can kind of trace out the location of dark matter by just understanding the expansion of space versus gravity that kind of creates uh, the galaxies that we see. And, and I know in the observations you see these different distributions of matter and dark matter. It's not this sort of perfect one to six ratio that I mentioned before, that you actually see clumping of dark matter that's sometimes separated from the regular matter. So can you actually have whole galaxies that are entirely made of dark matter? Yes, that's actually one of the topics I'm super excited about. So I work on some of these dark matter only galaxies. And the way you can think of it is that the dark matter, as I said, is almost uniformly distribu distributed in the early time in the universe, but some of it is slightly denser than other parts. So that creates and kind of collapses down into galaxies. And a lot of those galaxies will actually be a lot smaller than the Milky Way. But because they're so small, they have a hard time actually holding on to the matter within them. 
So we think that when star formation turned on in these galaxies, you might actually blow out a lot of the gas that could create more stars, but you won't blow out the dark matter. So that means you can end up with these kind of small, tiny galaxies that only have dark matter. And they might have some gas, but they're at least very, very hard for us astronomers to find. Well, if they are dark matter and the dark matter is invisible, mm -hmm. how do we find them? Oh, great question. So, for example, around our own uh, galaxy, the Milky Way, it's hypothesized in our current paradigm of cosmology and how we think about the universe that there should be actually thousands of dark matter clumps, these dark galaxies, kind of orbiting our own galaxy. And some of these might be destroyed when they, for example, pass through the huge Milky Way disk. That's one of way of destroying them. And some of the smallest one, uh, ones might also be destroyed just from the tides as they orbit our galaxy. However, we imagine that some of them will survive and actually they can plow through something called stellar streams. And that's, uh, for example, formed when a real galaxy with stars uh, falls into our own Milky Way and get kind of tidally stretched out. You should be able to see these density signatures in uh, the stellar streams that might indicate what type of dark matter halo that plowed through them. You hinted at a way that they could form, that you've got these stars as they're early forming and they're sort of blasting themselves apart and the clump of dark matter can't hold on to them and so that part is gone. Are, is that the main way that these might form? Are there other ways that you could get these dark galaxies? So a different hypothesis is that if you have what's called uh, an AGN, an active galactic nuclei within uh, a galaxy from a black hole, you could actually that way blow out a lot of the gas from a galaxy as well. But it's still not really clear to us astronomers what type of galaxies and if all small galaxies would have these active galactic nuclei. So the best theory right now is that some of them might not even have attracted a lot of gas initially because they didn't have a lot of gravity to pull in the gas, but also that this gas is very easily lost. Also from stars exploding, actually, so not just from stars turning on initially. And I know that astronomers and, and physicists are trying to search for dark matter, like in the Large Hadron Collider, and try to actually see if they can understand the underlying particle. Does mm -hmm. the search that you're working on give us any sense of of that underlying nature of dark matter? Yeah, also a great question, because for example, if dark matter is cold, so the cold dark matter paradigm is very popular right now, which states that dark matter might be a very massive, weakly interactive particle. When we're saying warm or cold dark matter, we're referring to also how fast it's moving. And depending on what kind of particle dark matter is, that kind of sets the structure of the early universe. So we can, for example, start to count. If we have cold dark matter, we expect a certain amount of these dark galaxies where that amount would be different if we had warm dark matter. That's really cool. So it's like the observations that you do will give the physicists a better idea for what they should be looking for in their particle accelerators and the two sides can work together. That's really great. Okay, Sarah, place your bets. What do you think is the most likely candidate for dark matter? Yeah, so I still think this is a hard question and I'm not sure if the particle physicists yet think that we're actually helping them because we're kind of still approaching things from different sides. <laughs> Um, but we'll see. So I still have, I still think it's going to be one of those weakly interactive massive particles that we just haven't detected yet. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the Guide to Space today, Sarah. I really appreciate you explaining these dark matter galaxies to us. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Well, there you have it. Dark matter is strange, strange stuff. We still don't know what it is, but we can see how it moves, interacts with matter through its gravity, and we can see how it can form entire galaxies of just dark matter. Big thanks to Sarah Pearson. If you haven't already, go and check out her YouTube channel, Space with Sarah. She's covering big topics like wondering when the sun will shut off, how big the universe is, and how galaxies can collide in an expanding universe. I'd love to hear your ideas and concerns about dark matter. Any ideas for new shows? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. In our next episode, that fusion episode I mentioned that was coming up. Apologies in advance, I got a collection of awesome collaborations like this one it's going to play havoc with my release schedule. If you're still interested in dark matter, there's an episode we did all about the evidence we already have for dark matter. We don't know what it is, but we're sure it exists. So watch that here. Originally, astronomers thought it might not actually be invisible mass, but a misunderstanding of how gravity, oh, let's do that part again anyway. <laughs>